Welcome to Electron Online. What we're going to do here is find where on the screen we're going to find the dark and the bright spots. So we're going to see what we call an interference pattern. At the very center, directly across the two slits, you'll see the central maximum. And then above the central maximum, it'll go dark, and then you'll see a bright spot, go dark, see a bright spot, go dark, see a bright spot. So we see what we call an interference pattern, a, a series of dark and bright spots on the screen. And of course, what happens is when the two rays come together and one ray had to travel a half a wavelength farther than the other, you'll see a dark spot. If the two rays come together and one ray had to travel a whole wavelength farther than the other one, you'll see a bright spot and so forth. And in order to find these locations, we'll have to realize what we need to set the extra distance equal to in terms of wavelength, the distance traveled relative to a wavelength, to find the dark and bright spot. So let's go ahead and do that here. To find the central maximum, the extra distance is equal to zero. They both come in, they travel the very same distance. When they come together, there's constructive interference, you see a bright spot. But the first dark spot on, spot on either side of the central maximum, when the two rays come together, one had to travel a little bit farther than the other. The extra distance is always going to be defined as the distance between the two slits times the sine of the angle theta. That's the angle that, you, that the rays make when, they, when you follow them up to the screen on the right side right here. And as you increase the angle, the extra distance increases, which means that as the angle increases, we'll find corresponding constructive and destructive spots on the screen. So this would be destructive, constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive, constructive. As you go farther out, the extra distance travel keeps increasing, and it becomes a larger and larger fraction relative to the wavelength, a half a wavelength, a full wavelength, one and a half, two wavelengths, and so forth. So the extra distance traveled by one ray compared to the other here, extra distance traveled is equal to a half a wavelength. Here, the extra distance traveled is equal to a full wavelength. Here, the extra distance traveled is equal to one and a half wavelengths, or three half wavelengths. Here, the extra distance traveled is equal to two lambda. And here, the extra distance traveled is equal to five halves lambda. And here, the extra distance traveled is equal to three lambda, and so forth. So that's why we get an interference pattern, because each time it's an integer number of wavelengths, we always get constructive interference. If it's an integer number plus a half wavelength, we get destructive interference. So now, how you f the way you find the actual value, how far away it is from the center maximum, we do this as follows. Well, first of all, we need to have the wavelength of the light. So let's say that lambda was equal to 600 nanometers. And let's also say that the distance between the slits was equal to, hmm, let's make it a half a millimeter. Okay, from this, from this information, and then also let's say that the screen was two meters away from the slits. With this information, we should be able to figure out where these dark and bright spots will appear. So, first, we're going to find the first dark spot. So, from here, we say that the extra distance travel is equal to half a wavelength, and we also note that the extra distance traveled is always going to be d sine theta, because the angles are really small, we can say that's approximately equal to d tangent of theta, and the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side y divided by the adjacent side l. So we said the extra distance in terms of wavelengths equal to dy over l, and let's see what we get. So in this case, we set extra distance traveled, which is one half lambda, equal to dy over l, and if we solve that for y, we get y is equal to 2, oh, not 2, we take that back, so we move the l up here, so we have lambda times l divided by 2 times d, and then if we plug in the numbers, lambda was 600 nanometers, 600 nanometers, l was 2 meters, d, uh, and then D was, of course, a half a millimeter, so 0 0.0005 meters. And that will give us the value, the location, where that first dark spot appears. So 600, oop, 600 e to the 9 minus times 2 divided by 2 and divided by 0 0.0005 equals, and we get 1.2 millimeters. So 1.2 millimeters away from the central maximum, we find our first dark spot. Now we want to find the first bright spot away from the central maximum. So now we set one lambda, that's the extra distance traveled to find the first bright spot, is equal to dy over l. So we have y is equal to lambda l over d. 
So we plug in the numbers again. That's equal to 600 nanometers times 2 meters divided by 0 0.0005 meters. And since we now don't divide it by 2, it's double the amount. It's now 2.4 millimeters. And you can calculate that on your calculator and get that value. Okay, now how do we find the next dark spot? Well, now the extra distance traveled is one and a half wavelength, so we set 3 over 2 lambda equal to dy over L. So now we can say that y is equal to 3 lambda L over 2d. And so we plug in the numbers, we get 600 nanometers times 2 meters divided by, oh, we need a 3 there, we need a 2 there, times 0 0.0005 meters, that's a half a millimeter, and we find out it will be 3.6 millimeters. And slowly you'll see the pattern here. Now, if we want to find the second bright spot, that means the one wavelength has to travel, two, I should say one ray has to travel two wavelengths farther than the other one. So we can say that the extra distance traveled to lambda is equal to dy over L. So now we get y is equal to 2 lambda L over D. And if you calculate that, you'll get 4.8 millimeters. And then if you want to find the next dark spot, we say that 5 over 2 lambda is equal to dy over L. That means that y is equal to 5 lambda L over uh, 2d. And if we calculate that, we get exactly 6.0 millimeters and so forth. So that's how you can find the pattern by simply always taking the extra distance traveled by the wavelength in terms of wavelengths, set it equal to what we equate the extra distance is, d sine theta geometrically. It's the same as d tangent of theta, which is dy over l. Set the two equal to each other and solve for y. And that's where you can find where the locations will be of all the dark and bright spots. So that's kind of the straightforward way of finding the interference pattern. What we haven't learned yet is how to actually find the intensity of the brightness as a function of angle, because what, what happens is even though you have maximum intensity there, zero intensity, maximum, zero, maximum, we will eventually also want to calculate what the intensity is between the bright and the dark spots. Halfway, three-quarter way, at any point, any angle for theta, we want to know what the intensity will be. And that will, of course, change gradually, like a sine function, as a function of angle. But we're not there yet. At this point, we just have figured out how to find the dark and the bright spots away from the central maximum in terms of distance away from the central maximum. Later on, we'll also learn how to get the intensity as a function of angle. But this is how we calculate the interference pattern. If you want to know more, keep watching. We've got not lots more videos for you.